let's talk about it. Are you ready? Here is your how to photograph miniatures like a beast for free tutorial. Or basically free. I'll tell you, there's a couple things that make it better. Cool. First things first, what is this that you're looking at? Does the screen look infinitely black? Does the screen look infinitely black? Ooh, does it look, what does that look like? Does it, it looks perfectly black, right? It's because it is, look at it, it is, it is. This is your new best friend when you're taking photographs of miniatures. This is called black velvet. If you have ever been curious about my photos and if I Photoshop the background, I get this question all the time. People are like, hey, how do you edit your photos for the black background? I don't. <laughs> They're raw. I don't edit my photos. Um, I only basically crop them. That's the only thing I do to my photographs. It's so black, like see this overhead camera is like, what the fuck? So this is black velvet, just a sheet of black velvet fabric, okay? This shit uh, just eats light, as you can tell. Like, it is crazy, right? Look at, that's black. Here's the table underneath it. Like, it is insane as a photo drop. Okay, so if you don't have black velvet, go get a sheet from whoever sells fabric near you. It's super cheap. Just buy like a yard of it. Perfect photo backdrop, okay? This is super important. Um. Okay. Next, you need to go into your app store and get this app right here it is called i'll show you right here lightroom right here this is what it is adobe lightroom this app is free okay free 99 from the app store i mess around in it quite a bit because i used to get a lot of questions about hey hey the sauce how do i take pictures i don't have a dslr hey the sauce how do i do this hey the sauce how do I? So I was like, you know, let me look into some manual camera control apps. And this is the one that I ended up liking the most. This is the one that grew on me. I dabbled with a couple of them, like Camera Plus, I think was one that I used for a little bit. I just really like Adobe. So this is the one that kind of stuck with me and the one that I recommend to people. Um, so basically, here's what you do. You go in here and you click the camera button. Okay, step one of taking pictures, open the camera. Depending on what settings you have, you might automatically just get dropped into auto, which looks terrible, right? See, look at my camera. Look at, see, look at dead black. The camera is doing everything it can to find the texture in there, right? So the camera using its auto settings is trying to figure out how to let light in to take a picture of that because it thinks we want to take a picture of this, right? The camera's dumb. Look at how blurry my finger is on it. Like, it's just, it looks terrible. This is why you need to learn how to shoot manual. Whenever people are sending me stuff or pictures, I get so many, so many pictures sent to me that are overexposed. And this is how you avoid that. Right here is an overexposed camera, okay? So when you open this app for the first time, there's two things you need to do. You need to make sure that you shoot in JPEG. I don't like shooting in DNG. There's a known glitch inside of Adobe where sometimes the picture will come out differently in DNG mode. Um, I shoot in JPEG, okay? Uh, the next thing you need to do is switch from auto or whatever you're on to pro we're fucking pros here dogs we're a bunch of pros as you can see it still looks terrible right on the camera it still is trying to basically figure out hey why are we taking a picture of this infinitely black object and um you know what i mean it's like why how do the camera is basically trying to figure out how to photograph this black velvet and that's not what we want to photograph we want to photograph a miniature in front of black velvet okay so black velvet is the perfect photo backdrop um, here we go. Let's just load a miniature in here for giggles, for shits and gigs. Okay, here we go. Here's our Ink 28 guy with a hammer, the guy who started it all. Here we go. Right there, what you're seeing right there is typically how I set up my pictures, right? This is flat. I'm shooting it on my desk where typically I shoot it, you know, from this way. But I just want you guys to be able to basically see this from my perspective, how I shoot miniatures. Okay, so that's why I'm using the overhead camera to document and keep track of this. So I still shoot. Imagine this black surface is the backdrop of my picture. This is usually about a foot behind the miniatures I'm shooting, but it'll work, I believe, in this example. So we're going to see. Okay, so now we've got our subject set up. We've got our backdrop up. We've got our camera app out and we are basically ready to shoot. Yeah, here, let me try to get this lined up right so that you can kind of see everything. Uh, 
Okay. We'll we'll get that in a second. Here's what these things mean down in the bottom. There we go. Let me turn off. Wait. It was already. Okay, sweet. <laughs> okay. I don't mess with exposure at all. Um, this is uh, th the settings in here. So let's talk through what each of these camera settings does and why they're important to know what they do, okay? This right here, second, means this is your shutter speed, okay? If you're shooting from a cell phone in your hand, you want this shutter speed as fast as possible, okay? But we're gonna talk about what that really means, okay? So you can see up here, my shutter speed one, 1 to 800, 1 to 640, whatever, right? The fat, the higher that number, the higher the secondary number, the faster your lens is, right? So we get down here to 115. Look at, watch, see how like glitchy and, and wavy looking my fingers are? It's because the shutter's open. So you're gonna get blurry pictures if you shoot like that, especially if it's in your hand. So if you're using a camera in your hand, you want your shutter speed like basically as fast as you can possibly get it while still being able to capture the miniature or your photo subject or whatever, right? ISO. ISO is essentially how sensitive your lens is to light is I think the easiest way to describe it. Okay. I shoot my ISO on my DSLR, on this camera, on everything at ISO 100. The higher your ISO, the more grainy a picture gets. The more, uh, the more fuzz is in there, the more, um, it's just not as detailed as it can be because it's a little bit oversensitive. Okay, so I shoot everything in ISO 100. Yo, Sarantis, what up, dog? I shoot everything in ISO 100, okay? Super, super, super important. If you get grainy pictures or pictures that look funky, change your ISO to 100. You will have to adjust settings to account for that, right? The higher your ISO, the brighter the picture, the lower your ISO, the darker the picture, okay? So ISO 100 makes for a pretty dark picture, but it's really important to shoot an ISO 100. It allows the least impact from fuzz and noise in your pictures, okay? You could shoot lower than that. I just don't think you want to because it makes your photos even darker. So you have to do other stuff to compensate for it. Next. <laughs> Next, shoot uh, white balance. Right? What color temperature are your lights that you shoot under? I know the lights that I shoot under are daylight balanced. So I can choose that right here, but that's what this is. White WB, otherwise it'll auto white balance. Let it auto white balance if you want, um, but you don't have to. Um, I would highly recommend knowing the temperature that your lighting is in your room or wherever you're shooting and just using that. So I shoot in daylight balanced light, which is approximately 5,000 Kelvin. Okay, cool. This right here is your focus. Uh, if you leave it on auto, the camera will just focus on as much of the model as it can or whatever part you choose. Um, but using this, you can essentially change how much of the model is in focus at a given time. Does that make sense? So um, that's really kind of the controls and what they mean in a nutshell. And we could talk through how I use each one basically photograph a miniature like this in this kind of light. So let's get, I'm gonna see if I can get this on this guy without it blocking. Nah, not really. Here, we'll see if I could do that. We just want a little more light on this fellow. Okay. So this is my, this is my, um, I shoot my photographs with this lamp. This is my photograph lamp. It's literally the $12 lamp from Ikea, just loaded with a 5,000 temperature light bulb. Using the Calvin, Kelvin, Calvin. I don't know what it is. Honestly, I have no fucking clue what it is. 5,000 temperature light bulbs. I don't know. Cool. Um, sweet. So let's shoot this guy. Here we go. This is going to be a little tricky because of how I'm doing this, but hopefully this keeps up. You guys keep up with this, right? So let's start here. Uh, it is really dark because there's really no lights on it. So I might have to like bump this up and high and get some lights on him. There we go. Maybe that'll be high and above. Cool. Look at this baller with toilet paper over his light bulb. Hell yeah. Paper towels, dog. Paper towels are legit. Okay, so here we go. ISO. ISO is a fixed setting when you shoot when you shoot miniatures. Cool. ISO's fixed. Don't think about it. Set it to 100, be done with it. 
White balance, fix setting. Balance it to your daylight, be done with it. Or balance it to your lights or whatever. Mine's daylight balanced, okay? We're, we only mess with the shutter speed and the focus. These are the only two things I mess with when I'm shooting on this app, okay? In order to get this miniature to expose correctly now, we have to change the shutter speed. So we're gonna have to bump our shutter speed quite a bit up. You can see we're now shooting at 160 to be able to get that miniature into focus, right? So we can control how bright and dark this miniature will photograph using only the shutter speed, right? Because we don't wanna control the exposure with the ISO. I don't like controlling the exposure with the exposure. I just like controlling my exposure on this app with shutter speed. I do the same thing with my DSLR, to be honest. So shutter speed is basically how I choose my exposure for all of the pictures that I do, whether it's on this app, whether it's on my DSLRs, whatever. So this shutter speed is honestly brutal. 160 shutter speed is terrible. Uh, there's a chance that because I'm holding this phone, it'll be blurry, which then leads into the other thing, which like, right, if, if I really wanted to go ham, like here, I could bring this light like way down on this guy and then I could get a picture, you know, a little bit differently, but you guys couldn't really see, right? <laughs> So the idea is the more that you can light up your miniature, the higher you can bump your shutter speed, the crispier you can get your pictures because you're not moving. But a counter to that is you can also always get a tripod, even for your cell phone. You can rig one. I rigged one up with extra equipment I have. Here, I'll show you. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, check it out. Here's this camera tripod I made. Literally, this just came with a light ring. I rigged it to just like a basic ass little tripod I had laying around. Boom, camera tripod ready to go. The reason the tripods are nice is because you don't get movement in your hands while you're shooting your model, so you won't get as much blur. Even better if you could set up a timer, which to be honest, I don't know if you could set up a timer in Lightroom. If you can, great. I just don't know how to do it. Cool. So we're liking this miniature, right? We got our settings dialed in. I want to see if I could bump up the shutter speed even brighter. Really, it's key to get your shutter speed as high as you can while still keeping the miniature decently exposed so i would say for me i can't really get away with anything more than one two hundredth speed cool and it's there's a lot of light like this is kind of hard to show there's a lot of light interference like my camera is blocking the light that's trying to get to the miniature so it is what it is but we're just going to assume that hopefully that's going to come out fine cool next we want to start adjusting our focus if we want to you can also just shoot in auto and just see if it's close enough. But if you slide this, you'll see that it starts to focus on different parts of the model. So all you're doing right here, and this is about as close as you can get to having a manual aperture and a manual f-stop inside of a cell phone camera is this right here. So um, by cranking it up or down, you can control how deep your focus is, right? So if I take this picture right here, it's showing me the areas of the most focus. So I could just guess from my experience using this app, the front of the model is not going to be in focus and the back of it will, right? So like that iron halo will be in focus, like right here. If I took that picture, I mean, the whole thing's fucking blurry because I've got shaky hands because my shutter speed's not high enough because my lighting's fucked up to show you guys this. Um, but yeah, that is basically the focus feature. Generally speaking, I don't really do a ton of manual focus control on this app, but you can. If your picture comes out not focused on the parts that you want it to be, you can exchange which parts, but the more green lines, the more it's focusing on, right? It'll show you what parts of the model it's picking up. So let's just for funsies say that that's where we want it. Boop. So you can see on this picture, look at, oh shit. I mean, you could kind of see, look, right. Some of the mace came out like in focus, some of the model did not, right? So. It's really using that manual focus is tricky to dial in if you want to do it. Otherwise, for the most part, you could probably just shoot an autofocus. Cool. Boom. And there we go. Right. So um, autofocus is generally speaking, probably the way to go. Um. But if you're having exposure and focus issues, you do have control over the manual focus with this app. Like it's it's honestly a brilliant app, right? So um, basically we now have this, we go back into our app, right? 
So we go, we got our photos in here. We scroll down to the bottom. That's our latest pictures taken. Boom. There we go. There it is. Down here, you've got all sorts of stuff that I don't mess with at all, to be honest with you. But you can, right? If you guys want to like bump up um, your exposure, your light, whatever you can, right? If you like, hey, this picture was underexposed, crank up your exposure a little bit, right? So for me, I know like this picture was hard to take. I had to, you know, crank the lighting, whatever. So I could turn up the exposure a little bit post editing if I want. But generally when I, sh the pictures that you guys see from me are almost entirely unedited. Literally like, I, really it just, I, I don't see the value in editing photos. All I do is crop mine, seriously. And that's that's what we get. But if you want to do anything like controlling some of the light or whatever, you could do that here in this app in this screen here. And then once it's all good to go, you know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Cool. Then you save it to your camera roll right here. Export to camera. Boom. This photo is successfully exported. Let's go over to the camera. Boom. Here you go. Here's how I get all my shit ready for Instagram, right? I open my iPhone app, the camera app where everything goes. I go down here, I go up here, I click square, bingo, bingo, bongo. I can expand it a little bit to fit that square right. Right, I, I crop everything that I do to a square. I I just use Instagram, that's my place. So I just crop everything to a square. Um, done, boom. That right there is how you shoot miniatures using a free app like a fucking boss, right? So bonus points. So the big takeaways, right? Let's recap, right? Let's TLDR this. Let's talk through the important settings once again, right? So for those of you who are, are kind of just getting here, just tuning in, let's talk through the really clutch settings that I think are absolute must and you control everything else, right? So let's talk through the beginning. You load up Adobe Lightroom for the first time. You go to camera. You change to professional because we're a bunch of pros here. Cool. You go up here, you make sure you're in JPEG, not DNG. You change your ISO to 100 and you don't touch it. You just let it live there. You change your white balance to whatever you know the temperature to be in your area. So I know I shoot under 5,000 temperature light bulbs, which is daylight balanced. So I choose, literally, you can say, hey, look, do I want to shoot under cloudy, daylight, fluorescent, tungsten? Like it, there's all these choices in here, right? I just know that my lights are daylight balanced. I choose daylight balanced. Auto, you could choose to mess with this or not. It depends on how well your pictures are coming out, but really the setting that you use to control your exposure on this app, on your DSLR, on any other way that you shoot miniatures, the setting that you use to control the actual exposure of your miniature is shutter speed. And this is where you do that. Cool. So this is how I control. So like when I shoot my miniatures on my DSLR, my shutter speed is three seconds. It's just open. So I just shoot it on a tripod remotely. I'll sit like across the room and I just click on my phone and that makes the camera start taking the picture. Three seconds later, it's done taking it. And that's how I control my exposure, right? So that's more advanced photography stuff. But seriously, ISO 100, Change your white balance appropriately. Use your focus to adjust it manually if needed, but shutter speed is fucking king for exposure. That is it. That is how you control how light, how dark your pictures are. Whenever you're sending me pictures and I say, hey, it's overexposed, it's overexposed, it's overexposed. That means there's too much light coming into the lens and it's hard for me to keep up with really what's happening. Are you painting appropriately? Are you getting glare or reflection? whatever this is how you fix that 399 there's your there's your hack of the day there's your free advice sauce gang to the moon now you guys know that's it it's that fucking easy it's that easy thank you guys for coming to this baller tutorial about how to take sick pictures for free